many critics um, say that AI will lead to greater inequality, and in particular, greater income inequality. I wonder what your thoughts on this are, and especially if you have any suggestions for what we should do to prevent that. Well, let me observe that globalization probably does lead to inequality because you can imagine if you have a global market, global competition, you have global winners, those global winners will get more of a share than their, than the, sort of equal to the sum of the regional w winners before. So you can imagine one winner, this is sort of the NBA salaries principle. So there's lots of reasons to think that globalization has contributed to inequality, and I'll let the economists uh, talk about the specifics there. It's not clear to me that technologies which make everyone smarter also increase inequality. It is probably true today that the more educated can use this technology, and therefore they'll get a greater wage gain. There's clearly an economic return to going to college, being highly educated, so again, uh, an endorsement, a strong endorsement of our educational system, and you all in particular. Um, to me, the question is, at what point does that break down? And I don't think we know. There's research going on here and in other universities to try to find where is the break point. You know, uh, we have this naive notion that everyone is fungible, but they aren't. There are some people that won't make it, but in my view, there's a very large number of people who will be able to use this, especially as the tools get more accessible. Uh, awesome. give, give an example. We, we, we and our competitors have these things like Google Home and Alexa. Right now, all of a sudden, computation is open to talking. I spent the weekend setting up my Google Home Mini, and I found myself talking to my computer. And my rule for 40 years has been talking to your computer means I've gone insane. So, so you have it. Well, I talk to my computer all the time. Well, then uh, join the club. I'm very happy to be in the club. Um, any questions from the audience? We have a couple of mics here. Otherwise, I'll keep going. After, after lunch, it's important uh, to have questions from the audience. Yes. So yes, no. when you were talking about you know, giving all this money to help train people and that it's important that people learn how to use the tools that are out there, one of the things that you could do with the million hours of Googler's time is to try to make it easier for the average person to learn things. I mean, you know, when search started out, we all had to get trained on how to search, and now, you know, right, and so, so actually the search engine was changing us more than we were changing the search engine, and it flipped when you had enough data. So are you thinking about how to use these projects to bring in a lot of data and personalize the, the training so that, you know, the, the AI walks much of that last mile rather than the, the individual. Yes, but not in that program. There's a separate in set of initiatives that go something like this. The smartphone that you use is a derivative of the WIMP interface, Windows icon menu, menus and pull downs, that was invented basically in 1969, 1970, 1971. So you're using a user interface that's almost 50 years old. Right? There must be a better way. And there's quite a few people in the research community that are looking for AI-driven interfaces that remain, for example, a smart. Everybody here uses a smartphone um, in the same sense, and similarly for computers. So my guess is that your po first your point's correct, but it'll be achieved through product improvements, which are desperately needed. Let's take a question from this side. Hi, thank you for being here. Uh, one thing I've noticed is many of the panelists have taken it almost as given that a decline in the number of jobs or the amount of work is a negative thing. I was wondering what you think about the, the shifting role of meaning in people's lives, what else people might do if jobs do go away. Well, uh, first place, there's a, there's a great website that charts the changes in the work week from roughly 100 hours in more than 100 years ago on the farm to the standardized 40-hour week in, in the US, similar number of hours in other countries. And it turns out it wasn't a linear path. There were nonprofit groups, there were activists, there were laws, there were fights, there were unions, and so forth, to bring us down to where we are today. So that 40-hour week was not sort of standard throughout life history. In fact, it's a relatively new idea. So one argument is that as um, people become more productive through automation, they will work fewer hours for same or greater income and be happier. The limit to me to that argument is that and I think this is missed by most economists, is that for most people, work is identity, and identity is very important. Mm -hmm. 
So in order for the work week to materially de decline as a percentage of people's life, they're going to have to have things aside from internet surfing and playing with video games right, to, to, as their own identity. How do I make the world a better place? How do I serve others? I can imagine lots. That problem has to get solved. Thanks. We have time for one more quick question. OK, I think this adds perfectly. So hey, um, I think I represent maybe more a younger generation here. And uh, what I'd love to hear from you aside is how do you imagine the human future of work? Well, I think the truth is we, we collectively like to work. Right, because it is this identity thing. And I'm assuming that in the future, you'll have an office which is sort of uh, built around, office or workspace that's built around you, right, both verbally and in terms of human cues, and sort of gets you. And that one of the things that's going to happen fairly soon is that there will be these ubiquitous personal assistants that will be highly trained to what you need and will be like having your own personal assistant so that you as an individual can be enormously productive, right? You know, what to do, where to go, what decisions, decision support. Uh, systems and so forth. That will improve productivity a great deal. And uh, what kind of skills do you see will, I don't know, be needed in this time? There's an increasing need in analytical skills and in data science skills, and I think that's going to continue. When you have, an, when you have this sort of explosion of data, you need people who can think about data, okay. um, both negatively and positively. Thank you so much. So thank you all very much. Let's okay, thank, thank Eric for inspiring us to think about okay, making thank you, it more smarter. Okay, thank you. So thank you all. I'm back.